This is a Garmin 495496 battery and it won't charge. I think it's dropped below a certain voltage. Once they get flat, it's not possible to bring them back to life again by conventional charging. These 495496 batteries have a control circuit inside, so it's not just the lithium ion cells. Uh, the control circuit needs power itself to run. So when the battery becomes very low, the control circuit will not allow the lithium ion cells to start charging. So the trick is going to be to open this battery up apply a voltage to the cells themselves bypassing the uh, control circuit to see if we can breathe some life into it and then charge it normally. That's what I'm going to do. As you can see the battery's down to one and a half volts. It should be in excess of 7.4 volts. It'll pay to take great care but what I'm going to do is to remove this part of the battery from the casing. I've got the casing very gently held in a vise. Use some cloth so that you don't damage the casing and I'm using a very thin knife and slowly prising it down between the outer plastic casing and this board. Take your time with this. There isn't any hurry. Just be very careful to go down that same line, breaking the seal. Patience is the order of the day. The more careful you can be at this stage, the more likely you are to get a good result. Corners are a little bit tricky, but again, just take your time. You should at some point be able to get into the gap between the casing and prise it and clear it all the way around. The result of all that patience is that you should be able to eventually prise the cover off the battery. Again, very slowly, take it easy. Very carefully, very carefully, once that front cover is detached, you should be able to pull out the battery pack. Here we go. So that's completely removed the battery pack. It would be a good idea just to remember which end, uh, which way round the battery pack goes. So where the push button is there, the release catch is up. So have the Garmin end towards that when it's reassembled. But right now we get onto the business of getting some life back into this battery. I've run a knife down this outer insulation here. And if you part it, you'll be able to remove the batteries. Like so. We need to get access to the terminals that are on the end here. So when you pull the end off here, you can see the circuit board, the control circuit, the one which is responsible for um, the correct charge to the batteries. And it's this which is causing the problem uh, at, at this stage because the cells have gone so low that they won't run the circuit board. Now at the circuit board end, we can see these two 
terminals here. These are the um, terminals for the battery itself. So this one's 0.8 of a volt on that side and on this side it's about the same so they're each about 0.8 of a volt. I've just marked these up as uh, positive and negative. I've used the, uh, the multimeter to establish which is the positive end and the negative end. As we can see, positive terminal, negative terminal. I've connected a 9 volt PP3 battery, uh, the negative to negative on this one here, and the positive to the positive here. So where there was 1.5 volts, something like that earlier, um, now at this point we're showing about 6.4 volts. Now I'll leave this going that should be putting a charge into those batteries and after 20 minutes or so I'll have a look and see what those batteries um, how what level they've reached they're up to about 6.9 volts now after having a session with the PP3 battery that should be enough to uh, allow it to charge when it's back in its uh, charging cradle. Right, so having popped it all back into its uh, shrink wrap, I'll just uh, make good that split down there. need it but uh, for the sake of neatness and what I need to do is to just make sure that it all fits back into the housing before I glue it in that's all gone in nicely I've cleaned all this around the outside here uh, but I'll take the battery out again now take the uh, innards out and use some epoxy to uh, stick it back in again. As in uh, other stages of the operation there, neatness is the thing. We want to have a, a good job. So I've mixed up some epoxy resin here and I'm going to very carefully put this around the inside lip of the cover. You can get some off afterwards with white spirit if necessary, but uh, it pays to be as neat as you can. I want to make a good seal as well as uh, adhere this uh, the cover to the to the back. So I'll make sure I go around the whole thing and then offer up the so the Garmin goes near the clip at the top there push it in there like so squeeze it in all round and in a minute I'll get some white spirit and go around the outside edge of it clean it up. I've just applied some <coughs> very light clips around the outside here just to hold it in place while the adhesive goes off so I'll leave that now for several hours before I actually test the battery.
this is the reassembled battery and if I just test the voltage there now we've got about 6.35 volts as a result of putting a charge in from the PP3 battery when it was disassembled I sell these chargers uh, specifically for the 495, 496 and I think they do some of the marine versions as well, the 276 on my uh, eBay site in the UK. Uh, they're very inexpensive, £19 plus the postage, but they work very simply. This is the repaired battery, I've uh, sealed it, resealed the back on and cleaned it all now and uh, giving it a boost charge whilst it was apart. I'm just going to pop it into the charger there so the red light comes on to show that it's charging. When it's finished charging it'll turn green and we'll measure the voltage then once it's finished. Well here we are four hours later and the uh, light has turned to green so I assume the battery is charged. So I'm just going to take it out and uh, see what the voltage level is on it. Right, it's 7.64 volts now, so that's in a fully charged state.